Here I am with the badminton version of the Pro Stringer. The it's a badminton. It's a one of those really small uh, portable stringers. Uh, as you can see, there's not a whole lot of parts. There's this clamp that you need a table to clamp it to, which I just did, and then you put on the racket supports, and that's it. And from here on, you just mount the racket, as you see I'm doing here. Mount the racket, adjust it, uh, got to get it just right. And the only other piece is the tension head uh, to the right of the screen, as you can see. Amazingly, it's very simple. And it is portable. I'll give it that. It, it is portable. And But you will need a, an electric outlet. So, of course, it's electronic. So you have to be able to find some place to plug it in. So if you're traveling, going international, you have to make sure that you have the proper uh, converters. You know, every country, they, they have different different shapes for their there's sockets in, in the wall and all that so you have to make sure that you have the proper size or shape that fits and here I am getting the racket ready to be strung you know I was watching the instructional video and they tend to to, to thread the strings before you pull it I, I, I never really like doing this every time I string bad pin rackets I just do it kinda of like a tennis racket where I pull one string at a time before I thread it and that's why, as you can see, it's taking me a little while, bit of practice for me to get used to this. But here I am. I, I just pulled the first string. And the tension head needs to be up against, directly against the frame of the racket for it to work properly. So here it is. And as you can see here, the string got caught in the string gripper. And... I had a hard time getting it out for some reason. I don't understand why. Again, I didn't have a whole lot of time to, to use this machine. This is literally the first time that I'm using it. So I'm having a hard time getting it. And what's really scary is this electronic machine, you know, when you press the button, it just keeps turning until, you know, the tension is, is reaches a set tension. And fortunately, you know, because I'm just practicing, I set the tension to be very low so, so as not to break the racket and as you can see it really took me a lot of time to figure out how to get the string out and so I, I cut the video I took the string out and here I am starting it up again and and the one thing I really don't like about the electronic machine is that when you press the button it keeps turning until you press the button again or until it reaches the tension so if you're stringing at high tension and the string gets caught or for some reason or another you don't want it to finish the full pull you gotta be really quick to press that button otherwise it's gonna keep pulling and that's how you can break a racket I've broken rackets before on electronic stringing machines because of this um, either the, the mounts weren't set properly or something was a little bit out of line and I, I hit the tension mechanism and it would just keep pulling and pulling until something broke, which is either the frame of the racket or the string. So you got to be really careful with this. And here, as you can see, the, the guide to the string is to the right of the tension head. So you really cannot push the mains at the throat of the racket like this. See, I'm trying to figure out the best way to do it, and you really cannot do it. So what you have to do is you have to... See, do what I'm doing, and you have to thread the strings um, twice so that you can pull it at the top, the head of the racket. That's really the only way you can do it. And personally, I don't like it. I don't like stringing like this because it does create more more friction uh, because you're pulling two strings at the same time with just one pull. So it is a, a little bit of tension loss. And ideally you'd want to pull each string one by one, but you really can't with this machine, which is, in my opinion, one of the, the worst parts about it. You can actually pull it on this side, on the left side, 
because as you can see the string guide is to the right of the machine so it actually fits more or less okay here so you can pull it one at a time on the left side but you can't do it on the right side which of course I don't recommend this because it means the tension to the left side of the racket will be a little bit tighter to the right side because you're pulling one at a time on the left side but you can only pull two at a time on the right side but just for demonstration purposes I'm stringing it this way and again I've set the tension really low like around 12-13 pounds to uh, just to try this out and make sure I don't break a racket or something but that's pretty much how you string a badminton racket with this machine is so under normal circumstances I don't recommend doing this I recommend pulling two strings at the same time on both the right and the left just to maintain balance as I'm doing here pull it here and as you can see as I, as I press on the strings I'm trying to get as much uh, tension wasted tension out of the system and at least this machine it does have constant tension pull it is uh, pulling the entire time so if you can work out the tension loss from the inside of the strings to the outside then the machine will the tension head will pick up the slack for you so that is one good thing about this machine but again here it is, here I am on the right side trying to figure out the best way to pull but it just it just doesn't fit up very well um, this is the best I can do it just it just wouldn't work so again I'm stringing two strings so that I can pull at the top so when you do this it really is important to try and take up the slack as much as possible here I am I'm pushing on the strings from the inside out to get as much of the slack out of the system trying to pick up the, the slack with, with the tension as best I can to make sure that it minimizes the tension loss and you can only do this with a machine like this or a drop weight machine or a, a very good uh, ten, uh, electronic or maybe like a stringway MS200 or ML140 uh, spring driven machine that that will pull uh, constantly because it's very important because when you're pulling two strings at the same time at one time you know the the string you will have a lot of slack in the system but here I am at least on the left side I'm pulling one string at a time I can pull the mains at the throat and at the head and that's what I'm doing here so here I am and I think right around here or maybe not um, yeah it's just again it's just that doesn't work um, the, f the throat of the racket the handle of the racket will, will just hit oh it, it does okay I, I remember it. yeah I may be able to pull it here so from here, from this string on, you can actually pull the mains one at a time. So it's it's the first I don't know how many uh, was it six or seven eight strings something like that that you cannot pull on the right hand side at the throat side of the racket. You have to do two strings, thread two strings and then pull. So from here on, I can pull one string at a time. And that's what I'm doing. And uh, by the way, I didn't have a whole lot of time to spend with this racket. I'm the the I don't even have enough length in my mains to finish this. I just wanted to pull a few strings just to see how the machine works, and so I could give a running commentary on it so that anybody that's deciding whether to buy this or not, they can hopefully use my video to figure out if they want it or not and as you can see I'm, I'm coming towards the end of my string 
and the end of my video. And for the most part, you know, this machine does have its limitations. It is very small, easy to carry, but it's, in my opinion, no replacement for, for a, a full size, uh, like a Stringway ML100 or Stringway MS140 or MS200. And, you know, it is portable, but you will need an electric socket, so. And you need a table where you can, where you must clamp it to. So you need those two things. So if you're going to the park or going to the tennis courts and you want to sit on a bench and string rackets while we, you're waiting for, for your match or, or I, I should say, and maybe if you, you're playing badminton, of course, so you go to the, the gym and you want to sit in a table or something in the gym and wait for your turn to play your match and string a racket, you have to make sure that there's an electric socket outlet there. Otherwise, it won't work. And you need a table where you can clamp it to. So you must find a table that you can clamp it to. So yes and no. I mean, it, it is portable, easy to carry, but not always necessarily easy to set up because you need a good table. Not all tables will work with this clamp. It needs to be a flat, rectangular uh, tabletop. It can't be completely rounded at the edges, or it can't have anything underneath getting in away, getting in the way of the clamp. So that's something you must bear in mind. The flying clamps they work pretty good with this, uh, no real problems. It it stops the the string no problem. The tension head. Uh, to be honest, I did not te test the accuracy of the tension, but it seems to be more or less okay. Constant tension pull. Uh, I, I don't know where you can buy this machine. It, I, it used to be sold in Japan. It's not sold here anymore, at least not Currently, maybe they don't have stock or not, but the place that they did sell it uh, just uh, stopped selling anymore. So this is the end of the video, and thank you for watching.